Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem from this afternoon's Elite Code Contest, Find Missing Observations. Let's just take a look at the example to solve this problem. So we're given a list of roles. This is going to be M roles, dice rolls that already happened. And we're also told that N equals 2 in this case. N is the number of roles that happened as well, so in this case we can see M is four, so M represents the roles that we were actually given. So basically this problem is about six-sided dice, right? So a six-sided dice could have values between one through six, right? All integers between one through six. And we had N plus M rolls that happened, meaning N plus M dice were rolled. The good thing is that the M dice that were rolled, we are told what values they were rolled. So this input array rolls tells us the M dice. So this will be M uh, number of dice. So in this case, we have four dice. That means M equals four. Uh, but we also know that there were n dice that were rolled and we're not told the values of these dice that were rolled but we're told that there were two dice that were rolled so in this case n equals two now we are told that the average of all the dice that were rolled meaning m plus n dice that were rolled the average of them the average value was four in this case so in this case we so in this case, we know M plus N is six. Six dice were rolled. The average value of these dice was four. So if we take six and multiply it by four, that means that the total sum of all dice that were rolled was 24. Now, the good thing is we were told what dice were rolled uh, among the M dice, right? It was three on the, on the left side over here, we can see that, right? Three, two, four, and three, right? So if we take the sum of the M dice that were rolled, we get three plus two plus four plus three. That's about 12. So if we subtract 12 from here, we get a 12 that's remaining, right? So what we did here was we took the total minus the M total, right? The total number uh, the total values uh, from the uh, the M dice that were rolled. And then we subtracted that from the total, right? And then what we have remaining now is the N total, right? The total among the N dice that were rolled. So N total in this case is 12. How does that help us? Well, I didn't mention this yet. But what we want to actually return is any possibility of what the n dice, uh, the values of the n dice that were rolled are, right? Because we don't know what the values are, but we're supposed to guess. And we need to make a guess that makes sense if it's possible, right? So we know in this case that there were two dice and there were two n dice. And the total sum of those dice was 12. So what possible values could each of the two dice have been in this case? Well, there's only one possibility in this case, right? Both of the dice would have to be the max value of six. If we roll two sixes, then that gives us a total of 12. So in the output, you can see that we return six and six. But what if the total, instead of being 12, what if the total was actually 10. In that case, there's multiple things, right? We could have rolled two fives. We could have rolled a four and a six. We could have rolled a three and a seven, right? There's many uh, possibilities. And in that case, we could return any of the possibilities. So maybe we could just return three and seven, right? There's many solutions. We only have to return any one of them. So another question to you would be, okay, we know we have n equals two dice. What if the n total ended up being 13? n equals two, meaning there were two dice and the total of those two dice was 13. That's not even possible because we have two dice. The max possible value of a dice is six, right? So two times six is 12. That's the max that we possibly could have rolled in total. So if we have a n total that's greater than this number, then we have to return an empty string or an empty list indicating that it's impossible uh, to solve this problem, right? Similarly, 
Uh, the value in this case was too large. It's possible the value could be too small. Let me show you what I mean. What if we had an n total of one, but n equals two? We have two dice. The minimum possible value for a dice is one. So if we rolled two ones, then we get a total sum of two. This is the minimum the total could possibly be. But we see that there's a total of one. That's impossible. We have to return an empty list in that case. Okay, but what if we do roll a valid a total such as 10 because 10 is uh, greater than two? Right, basically this number 10, whatever the total is, has to be less than or equal to n times 6 and it has to be greater than or equal to n uh, times 1. Right, in this case that's true. So this is a possible solution. Right, this is a possible valid total value. So we have to return a list for each of these two these two dice that were rolled, what possible values could they have been? We know that there's many solutions, right? Five, five, four, six, et cetera. We just need to get one of them. How exactly can we make sure that we have a valid way of doing this? Well, uh, there's probably a lot of ways you can do this. The first one that came to my mind is just being greedy. And by that, I mean, basically take the max possible value that we can. So in this case, the total is 10. We have two dice. So what's the max value we could take? We could take a six, right? So if we take a six, then we only have a one dice remaining, and then we have a remaining total of four. Now, again, let's take the max possible value we can do. We can't do a six because that would be taking too much. We can't take a five because that would be taking too much. But we can take a four value and that works out for us in this case because we only have one dice remaining and four is the total amount remaining. So for the second dice, we can pick four. So that works in this case. But what if we had a smaller value? What if we had a two as the total value, but we had n equals two, right? Two dice and two is the total. So in this case, the max possible value we can take is a two. But if we do that, we're left with zero and we're left with one dice remaining. So we're going to end up returning an output of two, uh, but we don't have anything for the second dice that was rolled, right? So that's not valid. And the reason that's the case is, you know, we could change this to, to 10 total and then 10 dice, right? What we're saying is that the total value can never dip below N, right? So, of course, I can't take a six-sided dice right now, right? Because we have 10 and 10. We want to take the max possible value we can take from the total without having the total become less than N itself, right? So, that's the way that we're going to handle this problem greedily by being greedy. And now let's finish up the problem by writing out the code. Before I do, I just want to say that this problem, I guess since we are being greedy, uh, basically the time complexity is pretty much the total of you know whatever n total happens to be because worst case we have to you know subtract six from this uh, you know n times or whatever. So I guess the, this divided by so, you know, the n total is pretty much the time complexity of this problem. That's what I'm getting at. And there's really no extra memory that's needed. Okay, so now let's jump into the code. Okay, so now let's write the code. And first thing I'm going to do is just get the length of the rolls array and then assign that to m. Uh, because for whatever reason, they didn't give this as a parameter, but it's okay because we can calculate it. And the next thing we want to do is actually get the n total, right? That's going to be pretty important for this algorithm. And I did go over how we can calculate this at the beginning, but in case you forgot, basically we want to take whatever the mean was, which is a input parameter, and multiply it by n plus m, right? So this tells us the entire total, and we want to subtract from it the m total in this case, right? m total. We want to subtract the m total. How do we get the m total? Well, we can just take the sum of the rolls array, right? So we can sum rolls array, and then this will give us the n total. And remember, before we get into the main greedy algorithm, we want to make sure that this n total is actually valid. It cannot be less than n. That's not allowed. And it also cannot be greater than n times 6, right? 
So if either of these is true, then we have to return an empty list because there's no valid solution. Otherwise, we're gonna get into the greedy algorithm. We're gonna build our result output. Uh, we're gonna do this greedy algorithm while n total is non-zero. Right, so while this is greater than zero, we're gonna do our algorithm. So now we wanna know what is the value of the dice and you know this value is what we're gonna end up subtracting from the total, the end total. And remember, we wanna be greedy, right? We want it to be the biggest value possible. So why not just say six as the dice value every time? Well, we know that then it might dip below, right? The end total might become less than the remaining n uh, rolls, right? So to get around that, let's say we had n total as 14 and we had n as 10. What would, in this case, we can't take six because if we take six, that'll leave the n total being eight and that'll leave the number of dice remaining n as nine. In this case, n total became smaller than n. So we cannot take a six in this case. So what is the max value we can take? Well, if we take a five, then n total will be nine. N will then, because we just used a dice roll, n will go down to nine, right? This is always gonna be decremented by one. So in this case, that was the max value we could possibly take. Now, how exactly can we compute that? Well, we can always take n total minus n plus one, right? This will be 14 minus 10, which is four plus one, which is five. So that'll always give us the maximum amount we can take. But what this computation won't work if we had something like n total being 20, right? Because then it will take 20 minus 10, which is 10 plus one, which is 11. So that'll be too big, right? We obviously can't roll an 11. Six is the max we can roll. So the, the easiest way to get the dice values, just take the minimum of n total subtracted by n plus one, and the integer six itself. So if we take the minimum of both of these, that will give us the greedy dice value, the largest dice value that we are allowed to take. So, uh, and after we have determined that, we can go ahead and say, okay, result dot append uh, this dice value, right? Because that's ultimately what we're trying to build, the result of what the dice values actually were. After that, uh, we do want to update our n total, right? So if that was the dice value, we want to uh, subtract from n total that dice value. And from n, we always want to decrement it by one because if we just use the dice value, we have this many dice values remaining. And after all that's done, all we have to do is just return the result. And lastly, let's just run it to make sure that it works. And scrolling down, you can see that yes, this solution was accepted. It's about linear time complexity and constant memory complexity if you don't count the result itself as extra memory. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.